All right, hey everyone, I'm Matt from Table Talk Reviews. I'm here with Chris Scafidi, a web developer and board game designer. Congrats, Chris, on your uh, Kickstarter funding. We'll get to that in a second. Thank you. Uh, first, we last spoke over email back in December about your first published game, Tomton, right. that uh, Brains and Brawn game was going to be launching on Kickstarter in February. Uh, I haven't seen that launch yet. Are you able to give us a status update on that project? Yeah, so Tomton is the game about Christmas gnomes. And literally the day that the publisher was going to hit the launch button, he had a personal tragedy. So that kind of got in the way. Um, you know, he says maybe he'll do it this holiday, and that would be great. Uh, he's got the license for a few years, so if it doesn't come out this year, maybe it will come out next year, and we'll just see where that goes. Cool. Yeah, that sounds great. Things happen, you know, that's unfortunate, but uh, it'll get out there yeah. eventually, so... That's always good. This is what happens with a one-man show for a publisher, you know. Yeah, so. there's a lot of small publishers in this industry, so I'm sure people understand. Yeah. yeah, it's totally understandable. All right, so let's move on then to another gnome-themed game. You have yeah. Nomadic Gardeners that just launched on Kickstarter. It's already funded over 100 backers already. I think there's two right. weeks left in the campaign. Is that right? That's right. Uh, let's see. It ends on the 31st. And okay. today we're recording on the 17th, so it's got two weeks to go. Sweet. So t tell us a little bit more about that game. Yeah, so this is Nomadic Gardeners. It's a game about summer gnomes, garden gnomes. My hope is to someday have one gnome game for each of the seasons. So we've started also, I'm, I'm working with another designer on a gnome. It's a gnome game maybe themed around the autumn. And I've got a, a very strong idea for what I want to do for a spring gnome game someday in the future. But this one in, on Kickstarter is the summer gnome game, and so we're kickstarting it during the summer this year. Oh, that's that's an interesting concept. I, I, I've seen designers do that with uh, UV Rosenberg did the uh, different seasons for like the polyomino games, and then right. other people fixate on like a letter. There's like that T series with Terracotta Army came out. Yeah, it's everybody's got their own concept thing. for sure. Yeah. So I believe that game also has a solo mode. Is that correct? How does that work? Yeah. So I like for all of my games to have a solo mode because, some, I mean, some people only play solo. And those of us who like playing with other people also sometimes like to play solo. So the Tompton game is from one to four players. And Nomadic Gardeners is one or two players. Okay. So it's a much smaller game. It's just a card game. It's got 36 cards, and it's about the gnomes as they're working on tax, tasks in the community garden to supply the local food bank. Cool, yeah. I'm not a big solo gamer myself, but I do like tend to, if it's like a small roll and write or a smaller card game, I'll, I'll be more willing to try the solo games instead of those like, you know, if it takes like an hour to set up the board by myself, right. uh, less inclined yeah. to try that out, but... Yeah, this one uh, looks interesting. I'm going to be looking forward to this one. Now, one of the things I'm interested, because your first game, Tomton, is with a publisher, and now this project, you're self-publishing. Can you talk a little bit about that? Because I know that's something, like a big choice that designers have to make when they have their games that they're either going to pitch or are they going to go through the whole process themselves. Right. So this game originated actually as a game I designed on under contract for a publisher, small, another small publisher based in London, who I've done play tests with back and forth. His, I play test his games, he play, play test my games. And then he wanted a certain game, so he hired me to make it. And then in the end, he decided based on his own business situation, he didn't want to go ahead and hit the publish button. So I bought a license back so that I could publish it. And I re themed it around gnomes. It originally was themed around chefs. Um, it was called Restaurant Warriors. And um, it's one to two player also. But I, when I got it back, I expanded it. I added additional um, addition engine building aspects to it, basically expanding what already was there. And I added scenarios and um, refined the automa, the, the solo mode. So now it's, it's a more robust game as a result. Um, I mean, personally, I think it's good for every designer to be 
aware that some of the games they design are not going to be licensed to a publisher because most designers have more ideas than could possibly be published. You know, there's the number of designers outnumbers the number of publishers. And then every designer has a whole bunch of ideas. So some games are not going to be sold to a publisher. So then you have to sort of make that decision. Are you going to publish yourself once in a while or are you just going to put some games on the shelf? And those are not mutually exclusive, you know. It's fine to make a game that you either give away for free or you develop for a while and then you decide this is as far as it's going to go and you just set it aside. This particular game, everybody who playtests it loves the game. And I was like, well, people really like the game. I'll just make a game for them, you know. And so it gives me also the opportunity to develop my ability to publish games myself. Because I know I'm fully aware that there are going to be more games in the future that I design that nobody's going to want to publish because it doesn't happen to match their particular market niche. But maybe the players want to have a copy. So now I'll have the ability to get them copies if that's if that's what it needs to happen. Right. That's pro this is probably a good game to practice like going through the yeah. Kickstarter campaign and learning all that process and like marketing and stuff because you know the the manufacturing side probably isn't as big as like a huge game with tons of minis and stuff like that so right yeah it's trivially easy um even with shipping i'm only doing the i'm only shipping a physical game to the continental u.s because okay. i didn't want to have to deal with the shipping nightmare so with even with shipping, the game costs slightly less than twenty dollars to make. So I can kickstart it for nineteen, and at a hundred backers, I'm not losing any money. I'm only gaining expertise, and I'm getting a fun game to the people who want to have a copy. So right. there's really no downside. Yeah, that's the most important thing: getting your games in people's hands. It's always yeah. fun to see people enjoying your stuff. Right. Yeah, it's very exciting. I mean, I I really love seeing people enjoy the things that I make. Um, it's just like this energy, you know, it's like you see those people really having fun and you're like, wow, I can't wait to make the next game because you know that you made some people happy. Yeah, and that's definitely. just very satisfying. Definitely. Yeah. So if people want to check this game out, I'll have a link to the Kickstarter for Nomadic Gardeners in the comments. And if people are interested in Tom 10, our interview is still up on my website, so you can go check that out on tabletopreviews.com. Thanks for uh, sitting down and chatting with me, Chris. My if pleasure. You wanna Thank you for having me. Plug anything. Um, where can people find you online? Twitter, Facebook, things like that. Ferventworkshop.com. Ferventworkshop.com. So my own business is going to be designing and sometimes publishing games that are about we folk. And I'm specializing in wee folk of the highest quality. So we'll start with gnomes, but there's a lot of wee folk out there. There's dwarves, there's elves, there's even goblins. There might be goblins of high quality that we might want to throw into the mix. And there will be plenty of other games. Um, there's also a section in the website where you can go and get free games, artwork, um, all, actually all kinds of fun stuff. There's puzzles. There's all kinds of, there's crazy stuff too. Like there's these videos of gnome sightings and it's actually kind of fun and freaky. <laughs> so anyway, check that out. Awesome. Thanks. Thanks.